Line integrals in space, mass calculations. In this video, we'll explore one of the applications of line integrals of a scalar function. Line integrals can be used to find the mass of a wire or coil spring lying along a curve in space. The wire or coil spring is treated as a mass distributed along the curve and must have a continuous density function, delta xyz, representing mass per unit length. If these conditions are met, then the mass is m equals integral over curve c of delta ds. Notice that this is just a line integral like in our previous um, videos and recall that ds equals the magnitude of velocity times dt. So this will give us a way to calculate the mass of a wire or, co or coil spring. Example, find the mass of a wire that lies along the curve r of t equals ti plus 2 square root of 2 over 3 t to the 3 halves j plus t squared over 2 k for t going from 0 to 2 if the density is delta equals 3 over square root of 2 t. Now the first thing I notice is that my t bounds are given 0 to 2 and that my density function is given in terms of t. So I won't have to plug in um, the x, y, and z like I did in the previous video because my um, function is already in terms of the variable t that I want to integrate with respect to. Now I'm given my parametrization of the curve and I need to find the magnitude of velocity. So I'll start by taking velocity, the derivative of r, so the derivative of the i component is 1, so I get 1i. The j component, 2 square root of 2 over 3 times 3 halves t to the 1 half j. And the k component has a derivative of t, so tk. So my velocity then is 1i plus square root of 2 t to the 1 half j plus tk. So I just simplified my um, j term. Now I want the magnitude of velocity in order to use in my line integral. So I square each term, i, j, and k term, and put them all all underneath the square root added together. So square root of 1 plus 2t plus t squared and that's a perfect square trinomial so that's equal to the square root of quantity 1 plus t quantity squared and the square root and the square cancel each other so I get 1 plus t. So the magnitude of velocity is 1 plus t. Now from the last slide, we know that the mass equals the line integral over curve C of delta times magnitude of velocity times dt. So my bounds are 0 to 2, so I have the integral from 0 to 2 of my density function, 3 over square root of 2t, times the magnitude of velocity, so times 1 plus t, times dt. And now this is just a single variable integral that I can integrate pretty easily using the power rule. I pull out my constant 3 over square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 of t plus t squared quantity times dt. This is equal to 3 over square root of 2 times t squared over 2 plus t cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 2 and this comes out to 14 over square root of 2 
which I would simplify to 7 square root of 2. So the mass of that thin wire along the curve is 7 square root of 2. Now we can take this a step further and find the center of mass. The center of mass is going to have an x, y, and z coordinate. The coordinates of the center of mass are x bar equals m sub y z divided by m, y bar equals m sub x z divided by m, and z bar equals m sub x y divided by m, where m sub y z equals the line integral over c of x delta ds, m sub x z equals the line integral over c of y delta ds, and m sub x y equals the line integral over c of z delta ds. Remember, delta is our density function, and ds is the magnitude of velocity times dt. Find the center of mass of the wire in the above example. So let's collect all the things we know from the above example. We know that r of t equals ti plus 2 square root of 2 over 3 times t to the 3 halves j plus t squared over 2 times k. We were also given the bounds t is from 0 to 2 and the density function delta equals 3 over square root of 2 times t. We calculated that the magnitude of velocity is 1 plus t and that the mass of the wire is 7 square root of 2. So we're going to use all of these things to find the center of mass. Okay, so first of all we know that x bar equals m sub yz over m. m sub yz is the line integral over c of x delta ds. The x comes directly from my r parametrization of the curve. So since I have ti, my x is t. So I have the integral from 0 to 2 of t times my density function 3 over square root of 2 times t times the magnitude of velocity 1 plus t times dt. Now I trust that you can integrate this yourself, so pause the video, take a moment to integrate it, and then come back and um, we'll go through the rest. Okay, so when you integrate you should get 10 square root of 2, and so my x bar is going to be 10 square root of 2 divided by 7 square root of 2, because remember we already calculated the mass to be 7 square root of 2. This simplifies down to 10 sevenths. So the x component of the center of mass is 10 sevenths. Now we'll do the same for the y and z components. y bar equals m sub xz over m. m sub xz equals the line integral over c of y delta ds. y comes from my r parametrization of the curve. It's the j component, so it will be um, 2 square root of 2 over 3 t to the 3 halves. So my m sub xz equals the integral from 0 to 2 of 2 square root of 2 over 3 t to the 3 halves times density, 3 over square root of 2t, times the magnitude of velocity, 1 plus t, times dt. Take a moment to integrate this, and then come back.
you should have gotten 736 times square root of 2 divided by 63. So I'm going to take this result and divide it by the mass of 7 square root of 2. So y bar is 736 square root of 2 divided by 63, all divided by 7 square root of 2. And if I simplify that, I get 736 divided by 441. So there's my y component of the center of mass. z bar equals m sub xy divided by mass, and m sub xy equals the line integral over c of z delta ds. z is the k component of r, t squared over 2. So m sub xz is the integral from 0 to 2 of t squared over 2 times a density, 3 over square root of 2t, times the magnitude of velocity dt, 1 plus t dt. And if you evaluate this, you'll get 39 square root of 2 over 5. So z bar becomes 39 square root of 2 over 5, all divided by 7 square root of 2. Simplify it down and you get 39 over 35. So our center of mass has an x, y, and z component and it's at the point 10 sevenths, 736 over 441, and 39 over 35. So that's how you use line integrals to determine the mass of a small wire or thin wire in space and the center of mass of that wire in space.